The keyholder unlocks the door and lets her inside. The only place he feels safe, he can hide. The door closes behind him. Her eyes start to tear. Walk slowly to her favorite place in here. The same place she goes to every day. Only place he feels everything will be okay. He sits down. She slowly looks around. The organ. The choir loft. Every chandelier. She's, She's safe, safe here. here. There are stories that people tell, and then there are stories that are never told, but live on in people's hearts that shape their paths and their lives. Join us in this 12-part centennial series and see what story will live on in you. Within the walls of this holy place is her comfort zone. She wants to cry, knees aching as she kneels. She wants to pour out all that she feels. Her Shikrus from Southern California reads a poem that she wrote years ago. Every day for seven years, Hershey came here to this house of worship in National City. This was her refuge. around 20, 20 years old. And I remember um, when my mother got sick, I had to hold down two jobs. And um, I'd have just such a hard day and I'd, I'd have such a hard night. I'd, go, I'd get no rest, but still the only comfort I'd have knowing was that going home, the chapel was there, I can go there and pray and I can just, just vent out. If I wasn't there every day, um, praying to God and asking Him to forgive me and to hear me, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. If the walls of houses of worship in the Iglesia de Cristo could talk, it would tell of the countless prayers said here. Broken hearts mended, illnesses healed, and faith restored. And the magnificence of these worship buildings is the presence of God, that he promised would be found and felt by his children. Since 1914, there have been thousands of Iglesia de Cristo houses of worship that have been built or renovated around the world. But this was among the first. Yung kapilya namin noon, lupa, walang sahig, walang tribuna, we started with a local ground floor we made of bamboo, uh, nipahat, and kogon. But benches were made for our for our members to sit on during uh, during services. We had uh, a small chapel. Uh, built with kogong grass as a roof and uh, bamboo. These pioneering members know all too well the true meaning of humble beginnings. Worshipping on dirt floors while enduring painful persecutions, surrounded by people just waiting for the Iglesia de Cristo to crumble. In these moments, the houses of worship not only became places of refuge, but the symbols of their membership, something they cared for no matter their circumstances. Dito, they call us Iglesia ni Tukak. And you know the meaning, I think the meaning of Iglesia ni Tukak, the frogs. Sometimes if they were not contented in giving us those remarks, they throw, they throw stones over the worship service place like that in the, this the, the uh, place where they congregate, they throw a stone stone like that. And then shout at us. 
uh, because that is a place of worship. We still concentrate our prayers, and I know we are safe. We are still safe in the church under the guidance and protection of our Lord. Ang mga pagsamba, mabiyay ang mabiyay. Mabiyay ang mabiyay ang pagsamba. Kahit na matitindi ang pag-uusig, kahirapan sa buhay, pagdating ng pagsamba, lumalakas sila, tumitibay sila. Wherever you are, magnificent houses of worship, praise be unto God. When it comes to worship service, you could feel the presence of our Lord God. Even if it is just a Nipa, Nipa house, and that's a quite experience uh, for us. Soon, however, the Nipa huts were no longer enough to hold the growing number of members in the Iglesia de Cristo. By the 1930s, sturdier places of worship were built using wood and galvanized iron. But war would leave many parts of the Philippines destroyed. Even we were in the in the evacuation camp, you know, it's so hard there. You don't have a chapel. You you go only in a small house. Led by Brother Felix Manalo, members of the Iglesia de Cristo not only continued to worship, they also built temporary places for them to continue serving God. Like this one in 1946 of the local congregation of San Fernando La Union, taken shortly after World War II ended. Thanks to God, we, were, we didn't stop worshiping God. We never imagined that a time will come when we will have these very big chapels. Never, never in... Although uh, there were lessons then that... Uh, I remember there were lessons that were, that were read about uh, building houses again. And that was a sort of very, very encouraging. So during the war, we said, oh, there will come a time because uh, we really emerged from the ashes. It was then that the architecture and design that has become synonymous with the Iglesia de Cristo took shape, beginning with the House of Worship in Washington, San Paulo, Manila. Kung nung panahon na yun may magsasabi sa amin na dadating na araw ang iglesia magpakapatayo ng konkreto, parang hindi ako maaring maniwala, hindi ako makapaniwala. By the end of the 1950s, new houses of worship featuring the intricate steeples and architectural details could be found rising along the Manila skyline. And by the 1960s, the unique architecture had become widespread throughout the Philippines, catching the attention of many outsiders, including Nick Angeles. One thing that amazed me about the, uh, the chapel of the Iglesia de Cristo then, uh, the building of the, uh, I mean the churches, is very distinctive. You could easily see when you ride in a bus going to Manila, there's a lot of uh, Iglesia de Cristo Chapel. The styles in totality is magnificent. It wasn't until he was invited to attend a worship service that Nick realized these buildings represented more than just a distinct design to be admired. I thought only the outside is pretty, but when you go inside, the woodworks, the millworks, the marbles. All you have is the pulpit where, where the minister prays. And uh, I found it very solemn inside the house of prayer of the Iglesia de Cristo. The construction and dedication of Iglesia de Cristo houses of worship has not only continued, but has only gotten faster to keep up with growth of its membership. The biggest house of worship of the Iglesia de Cristo is seen from the air in the heart of Quezon City. The central temple not only symbolizes the triumphs of God's people, but is also a tangible manifestation of the fulfillment of the promise God made to his nation. No, ako'y 
bata pa sa iglesia, hindi dumaan sa guni-guni ko na ang iglesia ay makararating sa ganitong kalagayan na maging tanyag sa buong mundo. Magkaroon ng milyon-milyong mga kaanim. Ngunit, lalong tumitindi sa aking damdamin na ang iglesia ay sa Diyos. In 1968, the late Executive Minister, Brother Aranya Manalo, traveled to the West, establishing the first local congregation in Hawaii and San Francisco. While the church was building bigger houses of worship in the Far East, the Iglesia de Cristo began its history in the western part of the globe. In the beginning, you know, in the worship services um, in the 70s, mid-70s and 80s, most of the worship services were like the ones in my parents' home, um, other brethren's home, in rentals and so, like hotel rooms. So very early on, I, I did not get to experience a real house of worship. At uh, sa awa at tulong ng ating Panginoong Diyos, na, nakatagpo kami ng iba't ibang mga kapatid. At doon na nag-umpisa na humanap kami ng malaki-laking pagsasambahan o pagdadaubusan ng pagpupulong. The hall that we rented prior to that is actually in the park. And you know, if in the park, it's very close to the park. So I mean, there are some, you know, um, people running there, you know, play, children playing. So this solemnity is not actually like what we have inside our house of worship. May mga lugar po na uh, sa isang uh, apartment lamang at meron din pong lugar na sa hotel. Wala pong ibang uh, paraan kundi humanap ng dako na mapagsasambahan na doon magkakasya ang mga kapatid upang maidaos ang maayos na pagsamba. It is the story of the humble beginnings of the Iglesia de Cristo outside of the Philippines. From homes to halls, to community centers and to hotels, they would move from place to place, outgrowing facilities due to the increasing number of brethren. Many of them came as far as West Virginia, uh, as far as uh, Southern uh, Pennsylvania, and in Washington DC, we have a lot of members there. We don't have, many of us do not have proper transportation, we have no cars, we ride the bus, we ride the train. But these early members did not waver. They would take off hours from work in order to travel and set up for the worship services in the rented facilities. Most of all, they prayed to God for the blessing of one day having a magnificent house of worship of their own. We like to be in the chapel, to be able to worship God. We like to be there, so to feel the power of God and the help that we can get from God. Those are the times when there's so much crisis in our life. We are new in, in, the, in the, the U.S. We are barely having livelihood. We do need our God to help us. And we do need to be in the chapel to be closer to our God. Today, houses of worship of the Iglesia de Cristo can be found in many parts of the world, extending the promises found inside each structure to not just those who have long yearned for it, but to the next generation of members who now seek it. You know, being, going to a place, moving to a place without a house of worship, and then having one like this, I, I think that is a, a tremendous feeling. And one of my first memories coming to the house of worship when it was still in its 
I guess you could say skeletal, you know, structure. I was in awe of it. I was just like, wow, this is big. And for me, that feeling that this was our own, that this was going to be ours, and this was coming from our Almighty God, and this was a blessing. I missed all the problems of this world. I missed all the good times and bad times. You know, there's, there's still a place for Iglesia de Cristo members can come, can congregate, and find that peace that only God can give. And, and I find that peace here in this house of worship. And, and you can't find that any place. You get married there, you bury your loved ones there, you, you celebrate and grieve together. The church was physically the center of, of a town or a city. Worship buildings have historically been the fabric that threads a community together. Prior to the recession, church foreclosures were almost non-existent. Churches used to be a, um, a community facility that was sacred and the possibility of foreclosing on them was unheard of. Whenever you lose a uh, parish out of a community, I mean, that's kind of the heartbeat of a community. It's, it's very, very hard. Low membership was the issue, and if you went to a service decades ago, the sanctuary would have been packed. Just as homeowners borrowed too much or built too big during boom times, a number of churches did the same, and now are struggling to hold on as their congregations shrink and collections fall off due to rising unemployment. The parish, um, because of the declining numbers and stuff with the Catholics and stuff like that, and that's what caused that sh uh, priest shortage. And uh, basically what happened was, you know, that the church just went to nothing, you know, it was just sitting there deteriorating. And it was to the point where you know, for most people, it was painful to see. And I Gary Boniface from Lamont, Iowa, knows what it means to have your church be hit by the economy. This was a Catholic church that three generations before him once worshipped in. It's still there today. It may not be a Catholic church no more, but it's something that's in the community that's still standing there, and it's very visible when you come into the community. What was empty for years now bears the name of Christ and seal that marks an Iglesia de Cristo worship building. The faith um, combined with practice, it seems like it's kind of the, the, um, the mission of uh, Iglesia de Cristo. And, and it sounds simple, uh, it's not simple in practice. And it's really is the cornerstone of Christianity and, and um, you know, what I see in the places of worship for Iglesia de Cristo is, is that sense of community. And again, it's that, that, that simple part of, of just practicing your faith. Whether built from the ground up or renovated, these worship buildings stand not only as landmarks in the community, they are symbols of hope, connecting brethren to the one place on earth they can feel at home no matter where they are. I remember when we went to Amsterdam and we actually called the head deacon because we don't know where to go. And he just told us, that's why he said, um, Brother Do, this is really Linda, you just wait on the bus stop close to the train station and you will meet all the brethren there. And that's what happened actually the next morning. We went there and then we said, are you members of the Church of Christ? And they are. To actually pull up to a house of worship that, especially a locale you've never been to, you automatically feel home. Because when you walk through those doors, the same God you worship at home is the same God that's there in that house of worship. And you can't find that any place. I've been around the world, i traveled internationally as well. Um, I only get that when I'm in the house of God.
for Nick Angalas, who stepped into a place of worship at the Iglesia de Cristo in the Philippines almost 30 years ago. The house of worship has not only become a symbol of his faith, but a purpose God has blessed him and his family with. You know, when he builds houses of worship, it's, you know, it's a, it's really is labor of love. He travels there like every day. He doesn't have to. I don't, he doesn't really have to. Um, he can delegate that too, but it's a passion, you know, he cares about it. Because it's a very delicate work and you know that this is for God. This is where the brethren goes, the brethren go and, and pray. And I promised to God that I will do the best, the best as, as I could to do it, because I know that's for Him. The Angeles family is one of the millions who've witnessed the power of God in the building and growth of houses of worship around the world. Success many may have been part of, but made possible only with the hand of God. Changes from a uh, simple house of worship to a magnificent uh, houses of worship now is a uh, a vivid uh, manifestations of the blessings of God that uh, He has poured out to the uh, Iglesia de Cristo in these last days. We ourselves uh, could feel that this is not a uh, work of man, but this is uh, a work of God to the Iglesia de Cristo. The key holder unlocks the door and lets her inside. The only place he feels safe, he can hide. She's safe here. Once he gets his keys, um, he walks in front of me and I'm, I'm following behind him. And it, he opens the door for me. I know God is expecting me. And the caretaker or the key holder in my poem are the caretakers at church that always wait for me in the morning and even at night. Seventy-four-year-old brother Rogelio Castillo is that caretaker. He's opened the house of worship doors for Hershey, along with countless others following the footsteps of his own dad and eldest brother. Ang tatay ko, dating bantay kapilya sa Cubao. Ako'y kinausap ng aking tatay. Ano bang gusto mo bang magbantay dito, anak? Bakit tatay? Ikamatanda na ako, anak. At kung eh, ano bang gusto mo sabihin niya, kung sa labas, Huwag mo nangangarin ng mga magtrabaho sa labas. Dito ka na lang sa kapilya. Bakit tatay ka ako hindi nyo na ba kaya? Hindi na anak, sabi niya. Ikaw na lang ang inaantay ko rito, sabi. As a caretaker in National City, Southern California, he opens the house of worship doors to any member of the Iglesia de Cristo who wants to have their moment with God in the solemnity of the sanctuary. 24-7, no matter what time of the day or night. Kung minsan, mga kapatid na mga, mga kadiwa, ganyan. Kung minsan, yung mga kapatid na matatanda. Pero karamihan na pumapasok dito, hindi naman lahat problema ng kuhan. Kanilang inilalapit. Meron din talagang gustong maganalain dito bago niya ipagpatuloy ang kanyang paglalakbay. Magpasalamat dahil hanggang, hanggang ngayon eh, may lakas at buhay pa rin sila. Nakapagpapatuloy pa rin sa mga paglilingkod sa ating Panginoon Diyos. 
Brother Rogelio has seen different types of brethren in different types of situations walk through these doors to pray, to meditate, to listen. And there have been times it is he who has had to open these doors for himself. Mas gusto ko na rin dito sa loob ng ating bahay sa bahay. Kaya dito, dito natin na ibubuhos lahat ang ating mga sorry natin, pro problema sa paglapit sa kanya na ilalapit natin lahat dito. Despite his sacrifices to care for this house of worship full time, this is a gift from God that brings him the greatest joy. Hanggang ako ay ang panalain ko sama, Hanggang ako'y binibigyan niya ng lakas at buhay, ipagpapatuloy ko itong mga tungkulin ko na tinanggap ko sa kanya. In Iglesia ni Cristo Houses of Worship around the world, Whispers of prayers are being said every day. The same way the power of God was felt through the thin walls of the first Nipahad. The Lord's presence has only gotten stronger with each new house of worship dedicated to Him. Its magnificence cannot be measured simply by what the eyes can see. Instead, the power of its magnificence resonates within. In this sacred place, she whispers, Dear Father, your mercy keeps me alive. Don't leave me, please, I won't survive. But she now felt his presence here. Her fear disappeared. He was patiently waiting for her all along. He inclined his ears to her. All she had to do was whisper. The house of worship is uh, where we could be safe. We could uh, express ourselves to our Lord God. We could communicate much more so to the youth of the church, wherein so many peer pressures are being experienced. Kaya mga kapatid na gustong lumapit dito na magmanalagin sa loob ng ating bahay sa bahay. This is where we can find the happiness of our souls, the food of our souls, we can also recall the great sacrifices, all the things that we have experienced in the past. We have to take care of it because we need it to serve God. The houses of worship represent many things to the members of the Iglesia de Cristo. Young and old, it is the place where they go to pray, to thank, to listen, to cry, and to plead. It is a symbol of their membership. It is the place where they go to worship God and to receive His teachings, the very essence of the magnificence of each house of worship. When you enter the chapel, Bear in mind, put in your mind, who is there waiting? It's God. That is God's dwelling place. We could feel uh, the presence of our Lord God as we do worship Him uh, in such uh, condition. And therefore, nothing could hinder the true uh, members of the Church of Christ in their uh, worship service of God, whatever 
situation it may be. Kaya yung iglesia tumatatag, nagiging matitibay. Lalo na sa panahon ng pagsamba, nagiging mabiyaya. Lalong sumisigla at tumatatag ang kapatid sa iglesia. <laughs>